to be going into a few games today, uh, but to kick things off with today's show, also, I guess it's telling a longer show in a way, we're going to be opening up with Blood Rain featuring Venata. So feel free to take that away. Thank you very much, Ignatius. Yes, this is Blood Rain. It's uh, quite cheap on sale, and it's also still cheap even when not on sale. This is a game involving a half-vampire, half-human protagonist named Rain, and we are on the search for our father. However, a Brimstone Society, a secret organization whose sole reason for existing is to try to keep humanity safe and all of hum just everyone safe from paranormal kind of activities sort of things. However, they have invited Rain to get involved. In exchange, they will also be helping find her father with her. So I'm going to get into the tech and whatnot as we play. However, we are going to be doing easy, any percent. The start of the game begins as soon as I click on easy and will end on the final boss, which is uh, the second boss with two individuals. One will be a kind of a gnarly looking dude that's really pointy and uh, red and the other being more human-like named Wolf. So I'm going to go on the count of three. Three to one, and then start on easy, and we'll get into it as we get into it. So on a three, two, one, go. So we're going to start off in Louisiana, Louisiana here, excuse me, and we're just going to go ahead and go in there and go over here. We'll be getting tech very shortly. We're just kind of getting a feel for things. This is like one of the first. It, it is the second longest or shortest level in the entire game. The other being about one second. It, the whole level is a cutscene, and I don't know why. But however, this is basically most of the tech you'll be seeing for quite a bit of it. It is nicknamed the drill and the cancel. So naturally, the drill is this, and that is the cancel. The drill helps you go further and stay in the air, and the cancel is basically Rain taking out her, her very pointy knives to try and slash things. Both are offensive type uh, actions, so if anyone is in the presence of Vin, or fucking Rain, sorry. Uh, quite, cr quite frankly, she's, they're going to get very badly injured. Uh, first skip of the game. We needed a tendril coming out from that enemy in order to get through the wall. And as a result, we have skipped about four levels. It's about three or four levels, so it really makes short work of things. And these spider kind of things have, one of them has eaten our mentor. So we are trying our very best to go away and following it. But we're going to try and stray it only a little bit from the spider. We're not going to stray too far. If you stray too far, you lose the game. So I'm going to do this to try and decrease the frame rate because we need that thing to get off dang tree. So it has gotten off the dang tree. There's about like an 8 out of 10 chance of the spider getting stuck on the tree. So we need to do that to decrease our frame rate. In terms of frame rate, I'm running this on unlimited because we need a minimum of 400 frames per second to run the game. And we also need it to be on legacy. Legacy is the only version of the game in which we can actually do this because Terminal Cut has unfortunately hard-coded 60 frames per second into the game. So when I mean that I don't want to stray too far from this little spider thing, it is because as soon as you stray too far from the, this little, it's a Marais wreck, that's the actual name of it, but if we stray too far from it we lose the game because Rain loses sight of it. Doesn't matter how close to the end of the level that you are, you are still going to lose the game. So I like to attack a couple of the mutates, or these humanic kind of individuals here. They are humans just infected with um, kind of a disease that is carried in these things, and we are trying to get rid of them. So right now we are trying to follow this thing down there into the nest. Because it Quick is question. not only... Yeah, sir? How, what kind of computer do you need to get 400 FPS? Uh, quite frankly, I just go into my GPU settings. Uh, I just use an NVIDIA card. You know, if you have AMD, I I'm pretty certain you have tools for that too. Uh, where you set the game to a thousand frames per second, the max. And then you set, you just set that specifically for Blood Rain. And so, as a result, then you're able to run all the glitches that you're seeing. And you shouldn't have much of a problem. All right. There's online tutorials for it as well, if anyone runs into any issues doing that. So, this is kind of the more fun part of the game. You gain slow motion abilities. And so, you're going to be seeing a lot of going through walls and corners. 
Uh, you'll be seeing walls, but it's it's really a corner, trust me. So first on the agenda, Brimstone Society has sent us in here to annihilate a bunch of targets, and in exchange of this, they're helping us find our father. So, god dang it, what you saw was the the quick kill, and you get the quick kill essentially if you take the enemy off guard, or you kind of do something to fluster them, or take them off their guard, and that's what happens with uh, the enemy there. Because otherwise they'll raise up their weapon to try in a feeble attempt at protecting themselves, but nevertheless. So we're going to shoot this, or maybe just slash it, and do that. Immediately off the cuff there is a skip here, and we're going to go through here, down there, and this is the end level. So there we go, I'm just going to shoot that over there. You can shoot most of these things, just the second one that we had found was not at all able to be shot. So the forbidden corner, over this here. It looks like a wall and a gate, but it really is not. So I'm going to try and align myself a little more. Once you see the pillar that's kind of shadowed, you can go ahead and do that into the void. Hope for the best. Doesn't matter. I need my weapon a little bit here. So we're going to go in there. And now we're entering into kind of some territory where we're going to see some funky looking stuff going on. Uh, this door, you have to kick it down. Now... The Daymites in particular are... this isn't the first game to have them, actually. It was in Terminal Realities... Uh, I think it was... Dang it, sorry, my bad. I was trying to remember, and... yeah. It is uh, the Blair Witch game, the first one from Terminal uh, Terminal Reality that they made. And like it, the it RECOM? More, as, uh, I never played it. It's more of a survival horror, though. Ah. But, yeah. So we're going to do a long jump and a cancel to get into the, the elevator there. So in this one, we're going to go. We're going to go through the corner, but immediately we're going to turn around to the right and go over here. In some of the areas, they're more connected as well to other rooms. So if you venture too far in through the corner, you'll wind up in one of those rooms. There, in particular, you really don't want to because you might trigger a cutscene, and then you're you're quicker just going ahead and restarting the level. So, we're going to go in here, get all the weapons, and we're going to go through here and do a halfway jump and land it. You don't want to go too high because otherwise you land on top of that elevator. And what happens is you have to start the level all over again because you get stuck. So, I don't... you're meant to just kind of switch over to a heavy weapon there. However, a lot of the time I find that Blood Rain goes ahead and switches automatically over to a heavy armor, uh, artillery weapon whatever you want to call it, uh, for some reason it does that. I don't know why, it's just in the PC cut. It never happened in the PS2 version. So you can move during that little fade out, or fade in rather, to the game. So we just immediately kind of go left, jump, and then you can skip the entire boss. We're going to do the same thing again over here, and that's another person cut out. Next level is going to be featuring essentially this woman here, who is Rain's kind of... I'm gonna call her a counterpart, and it's one of the hardest levels in the game because once she gets you, she gets you. There's two ways of going about this corner. You can phase through it like I am, or you can go right around. I just prefer not to because sometimes there's an invisible wall. That is a leap of fate. You kind of just have to work with it. And if you miss it, you just start again, or you can do it legit as well. A lot of people like to do it legit, I think, um, because those are the two ways of doing it. Either you do it legit, or you just skip the I did. So, we're not meant to be here yet, so it's flooded with water. We're not going to say, never mind, we're still, we are only half vampire, it doesn't hurt us that much. So, we're going to go on through. So, we're going to go, we're going to be going like way deeper into the mines now, kind of where all these daymites are kind of being sourced from. They were kind of unearthed while things were happening, when there's activity in the area, however, they're not very good for us, as we can see. They're taking over people's bodies and possessing them. And they, the lore that is given is that they go in through the, the mouth and then they take over the head by excreting a substance in which it destroys the brain and they're able to take over and take host. We're going to do, anyway, we're going to do our best to stay kind of away from the barrels with the red middle on them. They are not good for us. Because what happens is they are full of like explosive material. We don't want that. So I'm going to go over here. There's a weird like out of bounds kind of... They didn't fix it for some weird reason. It's kind of like a, a leftover part from where they were working on things. And we're going to use it over here as well. 
and continue on our journey here. So about here, you want to jump back in bounds because if you go any further, what happens is you just fall through the earth, uh, even though that really was not the earth. So I'm going to go over this direction. The daylights, sometimes they come out, sometimes they don't. And I'm just going to do this because I find I waste too much ammo. <laughs> so I want to save it for that. There's a major skip in here, but it's very, very chancy. So I'm just going to say I'm going to go with the safer one over here, which is basically just roll with it. Uh, if you have some really good, you know, handy weapons on you, you can go through the out of bounds section, kind of shoot a really, really pinpoint section. We're just going to do this legit. And go through that, that way. Now this one, my favorite. This guy over here, he has a rocket launcher. I want his rocket launcher, but I also don't want him to shoot me with it or anything else. Are we going to get it? Do we got it? So the more rockets, the better, because we're going to be able to use them precisely for one area. And you want to have them, like, there's one that is kind of a safety rocket, just in case you miss. The other one is then for the landing spot. And you have the extra one then for a much later level on in the game. So we're going to pop on over here. We're going to go through the tunnel here. Yeah. And we're going to slash these people just because we don't want to get shot too much. It doesn't really matter, though. We're on easy, so. But, you know, nevertheless, just things that you pick up. And then we just have to go along through here and we wind up in this section here. All we have to do then is drop down and piece of cake. So this one, believe it or not, there is a corner. There is a corner, trust me. And we're going to try and phase through the corner so we can skip about half of the level, go through here. And then we have these guardian day mites. We don't need to do that. We're going to skip it. And remember our rocket launcher? Uh, well, we're going to be shooting that in this level. And again, there's going to be another corner. And jump. So we're going to use this leverage to get up top here. We're going to land. So, I'm going to jump over here, aim for this tunnel kind of over there, and shoot. So it was barely visible, but there is that tunnel there. And because of the blast radius of the actual, well, a rocket is going to have a really large blast radius. So we go ahead and use that to pass on by through the level. Once you hit those, you're pretty much safe. So we're going to do that. And another one. And land directly in here. One, two, three. So what's happened is basically there was a, a heart, there was an eye actually of Belair, which these people were after. Uh, tough, I have it now. Bye. Also, loud noise warning. It's going to happen in about three seconds. And that is it. There's no other sound like it in the entirety of the game. Unfortunately, you can decrease the sound as much as you like. However, it doesn't actually remove it whatsoever. Uh, you want to do the drill before that explosion appears however because otherwise you get staggered and if you stagger too much you get drawn too much into the flames with the explosion and you die and then you just have to do the level entirely all over again no skips have been found so far so we're just going to do it legit we're going to go and pass on up over here and oh, jump and there we go so the whole place is a wreck but we're just going to continue on here and we're going to try and find a sweet spot over here. You don't want to go like too far to the left, but I'm going to try and get it all the same because you, there it is. Well, that is our new vision ability. You just want to do a drill quickly in here and do a cancel up here. And that's the end of the level. And that's the really short level that I was talking about. That was only about a second. The whole level is a cutscene. So... The, that was a boss in there where there was all the rubble. We would have been going the, in there usually. However, since we have skipped it, there's a whole bunch of dialogue that we missed. Rain says she is done here. I concur. I'd say we are done there. So we're going to go over here and jump on that. And on top of this, cutscene. There we go. You don't really want to move during cutscenes whatsoever because your moves that you are engaging in are going to get cancelled out entirely if you do that. Don't know why I'm hitting that button. So this is what happens when... There we go. So they do try to protect themselves, but we are able to get on them all the same and remove them as a target. 
And then we're going to go back to where we came over here and we're going to go through that same corner because it serves two purposes. It serves two floors, so through there. And nothing's happening here, so I'm going to remove ourselves from the area, go back in and oh, there's a lot of action all of a sudden. And there's a guy in here and I'm just going to do the same thing as we did before and remove him as a target. And after that, we are free to actually leave the level. Now, these things are called Hedrox. Hedrox the Unlimited. The more you slash at him, the more of him will come into existence. And you don't really want to mess with him too much. He can bring your health from 100 to 0 really, really quick. And you also want some health when coming out of this section because that can actually ruin your run too. So, here's the mech section. <laughs> I don't know why there's a mech section, but eh, it's fun. You just don't want to let these things get too close to you for too long because... Don't do it. <laughs> they will again bring your health from 0 to 100 and I'm also going to go ahead and... Okay, it's not explained anywhere as far as I can tell in the game or in the manual, but there is a cooldown on your gun here. But what I'm going to do is kind of phase into him a little bit so that I can do a little bit of extra damage. Because that also is not explained and I didn't learn it up until now, but whoever, that's one down. And then we go into the main central area of the cathedral and there's three more. And we just want to do the same thing again to all three of them. You can kind of body block them as well so that you try to prevent them from moving too far back or too far forward. You just have to kind of circle them or just kind of bump them into a corner or so. So that's one down. Did the movie have mechs? Yeah, a mech. A lot of mechs. And that's huh. another down. So one down. There is another one after this, but we'll be getting there. And run a cooldown again. So I'm going to try and body block him a little bit. They like to pretend that they're not going to go with you. Sometimes they don't, sometimes they do though. Most times they do. This one a little more. He likes to do what he wants a little more than the rest do, but it's fine. He's one of the more... He's expected to do this kind of thing, quite frankly. And rain also... It doesn't matter, actually, if there's more than one guy on the screen. Sometimes she will aim for an entirely different dude. But there we go. We have him then. And now we just have to go back to where we came at the start of the level, and then we'll be able to meet the last boss of the level. Just have to swiftly turn around this corner, and by swift I mean somewhat quickly. And just do what we did before. However, I'm gonna try and prevent this guy from going too far to the big from the spawn point. I don't want him to go too far back there, because that's bad. This guy goes back to the central area of the cathedral, it's fine. However, I am gonna try and show that's normal damage, and then that's kind of trying to boost it. He starts begging for his life, but we don't really care because we need to kill him anyway. So, you can see that the damage does really, really quite a bit more by bumping into him rather than just by shooting. And then there's gonna be a bunch of guys in jetpacks coming in. Believe me, I, <laughs> it gets a little wild, the game. There's also gonna be these weird back creatures, but also Hedrox, he may look like a werewolf. He's not, he's actually like this different type of vampire entirely. And I think the bats are too, actually. They're just these more advanced forms, whereas Rain is human. These things have been in this region for a really long time. And as you're going up here, you really don't want to take many risks. You want to take it as safe as possible, because if you fall down, you have to climb all the way back up. So I'm going to do that. And there we go. There's going to be a little cutscene, kind of showing the carnage here with these newfound bat demons. And there we go. Shoot the glass, have a little cutscene, and then we go on in. So, believe it or not, there's another little corner here that we can phase through. It's a little, it can be a little bit more finicky, but we got it. And we still have our rocket, which is beautiful, because I'm going to be needing that later. So, one of the guys has gone ahead and decided to say... Oh, god dang it. She didn't uh, allow me to jump. The guy, There is a guy in there, and he's trying his best not to get murdered by head rocks right now. So, hopefully he can be murdered by me instead. I'm gonna phase on through here, into the corner, and then we're gonna go in and feed on this guy here. Sometimes Rain will go ahead and feed off of Hedrox instead. We don't want that, but sometimes it can't be avoided. It is just one of those weird finicky things. 
And we're going to go through here again to exit and go over to this building here where the second target is. And I'm going to collect a grenade there. And down here we go. On, in the cutscene, it's just Hedrox taking his life on our behalf because we need to take him down. However, they want knowledge. That is their main reason for existing in these world, this world where it's just like, hey, they have these weird demogorgon looking hands. So they just use those to absorb not only brains, but wisdom that people might have. And then that's just kind of their deal. Their soul drive in life, taking people's knowledge. I'm going to go in through here and in through here. All right, screw your boxes. Go over here. Now, this is kind of a tricky one. Sometimes you will wind up falling through. And there will be a fade like that to go into this next level. However, if you fall from the level that was below that we jumped on, uh, what can happen is rain will die and you will spawn into this level dead. So in order to prevent that, I just went to the level that was a little higher and we dropped down. So Hedrox is also going to help us make short work of these sections here, these little beams. Or not beams, but yeah. There we go. And the more you slash at them, the more likely it is to get trigger another little cutscene where it is saying, hey, you know what happened? You know the, the meaning of infinite, don't you? But it's cool. They landed in some water and now we don't have to worry about them ever again. So best level in the game, the bridge. Wait until that tire a little bit, jump twice and then aim. There we go. So these guys can shoot all the rockets at you like that. Uh, we try not, uh, to avoid that as much as possible because naturally we don't want to die. And sometimes it can be very easy to get shot by them, by the rocket, if you let that one guy live. So that's why I took him out. So there's going to be two cutscenes on this bridge that is now exploding behind us. And after the second one, we're going to be looking at the second light on the left. About three quarters of the way there, we want to start jumping because the bridge not only gives out, it is also random in how it decides to break. So I'm doing the safe strat there, where I just wait until you get over the bridge and then take care of him. If he's on the bridge, however, you really want to wait for him to come back off of the bridge because if you try to do wreck him there, uh, you're probably going to encounter a glitch where the enemies become invincible and you can't kill them. You might get lucky and you might fall, but you know, we don't want to take that risk. These guys are actually probably the two most interesting characters on the enemy side. So I'm injuring one, but only the other is taking the damage. However, because of that, if one dies, the other also has to die. And there's a bit of a difference in dialogue. I think it's if you kill Sigmund first. I, I can't remember. If you kill one of them first, one of them has this uh, unique dialogue compared to the other where they're both completely enamored with rain, but one more so than the other. That was also our mentor. And we're coming up to the final boss now. And we're going to say, you know, oh, I, I really miss you, Mince, but we're going to do our best to avenge you. So going on through here, and here we go. This is Belier and Wolf. And I'm gonna try and wait for him to get over here. There we go. The vision is really finicky, by the way. What happens during it, it's really sensitive. Like, it works, you get to aim properly, but the thing is, at what cost? Uh, quite a lot of stability. So what we're gonna do here is grab the grenade launcher uh, in version 2.0. There's only one of these unless Wolf decides to t give us one as well, because sometimes Wolf brings down random weapons or refills them entirely. So it's really nice to have when he does that. It's pretty cool. Okay, he's getting too close. Now, I don't know if... Yes, he did. Okay, that's fantastic. Uh, Wolf has brought down the rocket launcher, which is fantastic. And also fantastic. But not that. Uh, but the fact that... <laughs> We managed to say, hey, we got another one. Okay, fantastic. So we need to feed, but that's fine. We need to make sure that this guy does not actually get upstairs because we may encounter the glitch again where they become invincible. And I don't want that. There we go. And he's dead. Time. All right. GG. I'm just... Uh... Thank you. That was a fun run. Uh... While we're in the credits here, do you have any uh, shout-outs you want to give to anyone? 
Uh, basically, just shout outs to the Blood Run. It, it's a very small community, but it, there is a few people there. And by a few, well, hopefully it'll grow soon. But someone made an auto splitter, uh, Toxic, who is the the leading runner right now, uh, made it. And I'm going to thank him very much as well for just kind of showing strats and whatnot. And I mean, if you want to see more of this or just in general, you can find me over on Twitch to twitch.tv forward slash Fanada. Uh, other than that, I'm also just going to thank you for having me on the show, and good luck to you and the rest of the runners. Yeah, thank you. Also, did you PB? Um, I did, yes. <laughs> there you <laughs> I go. PB, yes. That <laughs> works out pretty well. Um, yeah. Yeah, because I was looking like you have a 2406 IGT, but you got a, like a 2309. Yeah, it's a 2309 by this as well. So that's that's really good, actually. Almost 40 seconds uh, better than my actual PP because I got a different one again. Yeah. Hey, well, congrats to that. Thank and you. And as well, um, once again, for anyone who did either miss the run or if you enjoyed the run, uh, definitely check out Venata on twitch.tv slash Venata. Uh, you post the link in chat here somewhere. Uh, hold on. There we go. See, there we go. Also, for anyone wanting to get into this game yourself, uh, as you uh, there's plenty of resources, there's the Discord, and you can buy this game for, I want to say, about $15 on GOG or I think even Steam. So it is pretty cheap and uh, pretty fun.